watched uh, Zombieland Double Tap the other day. That is the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> I'm glad I waited for to say that last. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, you've been down here the whole morning. <laughs> what would you do if you were Jason? I would tell a teacher. What's up, everybody? Hello there. What's up? It's good to be back. Well, it's Cowboy Bebop Day. Here Cowboy Bebop Day. Hyper yeah. RPG. And can, can we just take a step back here? And uh, Zach, why don't you tell people, just give a little context of how much you love Cowboy Bebop. I, I am right now. Have you had one of these? No, is it pretty bad? Ooh, it's strong. Are you telling me to go get one? It just punched me in the mouth hard. I want to get punched in the mouth. I'll be right back. <coughs> um, do you know anything about Cowboy Bebop, Adam? Uh, all I know is that everybody who's seen it loves it, mm -hmm. and everyone yells at me for not having seen it yet. Let me just say, I think it is a classic. And I don't say everything is a classic, but this is a solid classic. And for many people, yeah. it was the gateway drug to just appreciating a lot more anime in mm. general. Yeah. So, uh, Today, sponsored by oh God, San go. Pellegrino. You keep saying that, then they're not going to sponsor us because they're like, they advertise our shit for free. <laughs> you know what? I might be able to work a little something with the Pellegrino. Uh, San so. Pellegrino. We will make everybody know that Italy has the best drinks. A San Pellegrino. Why would you get that the stupid LaCroix when you could have this shit? It's the best San Pellegrino. It's so the much best. Better. It's so good. It punch you in the mouth. It does feel like it's I just... It's stronger. It's, it's definitely It's so true. much stronger. I told you. Yeah. I told you. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That other one is more like flavored water. This is like I'm drinking lemon concentrate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like way more carbonated. This, this one's... No, like, this, is, this isn't car about carbonation. Yeah. This and, is and like... the flavor You know, like fruit. that little uh, lemon uh, concentrate dispenser I have up there? Yeah. It's kind of like you went... Ah, and in your mouth like and then yeah a little shot of water Took a little shot of I, water after i used to sell <sighs> those and uh i had to stop because bro are you thirsty <laughs> my god you have coffee water okay. a san pellegrino you are mm. wow someone okay. is going to be in the toilet for the next segment of the all right, show all right. well this next segment's hers so we're good that's what i mean <laughs> just a little sip of this Jeez. a little right. sip of that you gotta hydrate. Hail hydrate. Yeah, you wanna throw some bean dip in your water while you're at it? Hail you, you should watch the acidity right here Jeez. on an empty stomach, Ooh, Zach. Oh my god. Okay, now we're just back to critiquing me like we do every day. <laughs> is this a, why is this? A, you guys are locked in here with me, and it's just like, let's just get the magnifying glass out about how weird Zach is. Hey, Zach. It, what was it like losing to uh, the Blockbuster game? Okay, yeah, I lost. It's fine. Jesus. It may just be because you're sitting in the middle. Oh, I was gonna say, I thought it was because he looks like Ace Ventura. What? Come on, this is maybe, just the clothes I maybe wear. Maybe that too. This is just the clothes I wear. Cool, 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 cool. Look, I'm embracing my dad bod life. I'm fine. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with this. I thought you just miss Hawaii. That no. too. No, it's that uh, the these shirts help hide my belly. <laughs> That's the goal. These kind of help hide the belly. Okay. These are important tips. These okay. are all things you have to learn as you age. Mm -hmm. Like, how mm -hmm. do you keep looking good? I would recommend a solid colored shirt and maybe something a little brighter. I can go brighter. I can go brighter. No, I, bet. <laughs> uh -oh. I bet. I got brighter. <laughs> I got brighter. Uh. Welcome, everyone, to <laughs> Hypercast, our daily podcast here on Hyper RPG, as we make our way through social isolation at Camp Social Distance. Here in Los Angeles, everything is on lockdown. I am the CCO of Hyper RPG, and I live in this house. My name is Zach Lim Eubank. I also live here. I'm the CEO of Hyper RPG. My name is Malika Lim Eubank. Uh, I'm not a Lim Eubank, but I also You're work here son. and live here. I'm, I'm the, You're oh. our son. Accept it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm Kaiju's big brother. Uh, my name's Adam, and I'm an executive producer here at Hyper RPG. And we all live together. That's right. That's yes. why we're sitting so close. That's, right. That's why we're doing this show together. It just so happens that we're able to keep doing our content despite being forced to be in lockdown. You know, we uh, we actually made a roommate pact. We realize if one of us gets it, we'll all probably get it, and we will lock ourselves away from the rest of the world. So go team! I mean, we're already kind of there. We've locked ourselves yeah. away. <laughs> we are. We've naturally done that for two yeah. weeks. Yeah, we've been doing that for a while. I, I feel like we're we're like just about to be at the point where uh, we've made it. I, I went out today to check the mail, our mm -hmm. mailbox, and right after I got back, I got a message that said, you have a new package at the mailbox. 
Oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to go and out. It was one of those things. I put on the gloves Ethan gave us, and yeah. I put on the mask, and I came outside like, <sighs> what is this? <laughs> Why? Why does that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, like Malika said, and it's funny, I actually read an article last night that anticipated, and it's happening in China right now, yeah. that after the restrictions were lifted in China, yeah. how many people were like, no, I'm good. <laughs> and kind of become agoraphobic. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Through a the little anxiety of all this. Agoraphobic about like, ooh, the sun, ooh, germs, ooh, other right. people. I was like, crazy. I was being crazy yeah, today. It's kind of like I was being crazy. There were people on the sidewalk walking around without masks on, and I was about to roll down the window like, put on a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. Wear some gloves. I keep doing this. You're thing standing too close together. When I walk my dog, and it's like, Ooh, oh, another person on the sidewalk. You turn. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. And like, then when I go to the mailbox place, it's a UPS store. I open the door with my foot, you know, and I'm yeah. holding my hands at my chest. The person inside, though, greatly appreciates this. Uh, the Indian guy yeah. that works at he greatly appreciated oh, yeah. that. He's I'm like, sure he he's it. got a mask on too, and he's like nodding at me, and we're talking to each other ten feet apart in this place. And he's looking for the package and everything. And then when it's done, I'm like trying to like sneak out without touching anything yeah. at all. Uh, but I, I also like that I go in there. He's got like bottles of his cleaner all over Good. the place. And it's mm. very clear. I that mean, he's he, like all day long. He, it's right next to a grocery store. So yeah. he probably stocked up when he could. Yeah. But again, then right when I walk out, there's like a group of people hanging out in the Ralph's parking lot. There's a group of people standing next to uh, the... Um, uh, Chuck E. Cheese? No, no, no. The other Panda uh, Express. Panda Express. Oh, oh. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like going. I'm a little bit of a crazy person now, and I was recognizing it by my immediate disdain for how close they were standing to each other. It's like, oh, what are you do? Oh, are how he's dare going you? In with the ruler. Get the fuck are we all like, other. um, have we become like? Has our life become like Pac-Man? So we're like, woo, woo, woo. nope, do woo, 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 woo. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. That's Stay like a away. new T-shirt. But I honestly wonder, like. <laughs> If and when, I know last night in Los Angeles, Mayor Garcetti uh, said that he doesn't see restrictions lifting till at the minimum yeah. May. Yeah. At the minimum. Yeah. And he anticipates longer. And he has the power to make that happen. Right. No matter what the federal government says, yeah. he's saying he will not yeah. until at the minimum May. Yeah. And I honestly wonder, at the end of all this, after we become accustomed to living in our hobbit yes. holes. Yes, we're all like Smeagol. I was already very yes. close. I'm not, I don't consider myself agoraphobic, but no. I was already a person that only went out of the house right. once a week. Right, right. And, and, and How I bad is this going to get? Am I going to become one of those people like... <laughs> Are you going to be the one that forced me like, I got to move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... Stay no, away. I mean, I well, I mean, I think we're again, we're like we're living in such a unique time where we've never dealt with something like this before. So it's all an adjustment for everybody. And I do appreciate the fact that the mayor is taking things very, very seriously and is put in, putting in as many precautions as he can to help prevent the spread of the virus. And I know that for the first like two weeks, I will probably be very like alert and aware of yeah. like where I'm going. How many people are around me, what I'm touching, what I'm not touching, how I'm like getting around things. And it'll probably, it will honestly probably take like a good couple of weeks before I'm like, okay, everything seems to be leveled. Yeah. I can touch a doorknob and not feel so terrified. Well, okay. Uh, Truth talk, I used to be like a real germaphobe. Mm. I'm so mad and that I set up Malika's camera and then she moved after the show started. <laughs> This one? Is this, is this, is this? Oh, okay. There you go. Ah. Uh, truth talk. Like, I, I'm very public about, like, having anxiety disorder. And I, it was kind of going down that germaphobe route. And my grandmother also had it to kind of a disordered level where she would, like, line up the table with, like, paper towels before she would eat something and then, like, take all those paper towels and throw it away. And when she would bathe, she would spend, like, an hour and a half, like, scrubbing her fingernails and stuff. So mm -hmm. it can, like, become disordered. And uh, to work myself through that, I had to read articles from, like, scientists that said, no, you're not going to get a horrible disease just because you use the public restroom or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, can, it can get a lot. Um, I had a fun question, though, for people in the chat room. Is there a certain animal you're identifying with right now? Because for me, I'm feeling some strong turtle energy. Like, whoop. Just like, <laughs> yep. I'm out. So I gotta it, go. Uh, I, th I think for you, you're like a badger. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was I was gonna say more like a wolverine, but if you want to say badger, that's fine too. I mean, badgers don't fuck around. I'll take badger. Yeah, I'll take badger. No matter I think about it, I'll take a badger. How about you, Adam? I don't know, like a polar bear. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna hibernate yeah. now. Bye. Yeah. I honestly have not left. 
I've stepped out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> now that now that you know them, I'm like, ancestors protect yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Spirit I'm not gonna get over it now. <laughs> um, I haven't stepped outside of our, our complex in two weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we did go to the store what was that, last Thursday? I don't know. Or the know. Thursday before? It was Thursday before. It was two I weeks ago. I honestly don't yeah. remember. Two weeks, dude. That was two yeah. weeks. Yeah. So I haven't left our complex in two weeks, and I'm kind of okay with it. Because we open up the garage, and I can just do like little little like laps around the complex. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. There's I, no one here. Um, I wanted to leave the complex to walk the dog. Yeah. And when I saw the doorknob, I turned around and I walked away. Somebody actually just posted that in the chat room, how they're noticing how prevalent round doorknobs are now and yeah. how much it frustrates them. It's like, yeah. why can't we get a fucking lever? Right. Yeah. Pin you know? shaped You can yeah, just like kick it with you your foot. Or your or elbow, elbow or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, what, what, what is the purpose of this round doorknob that you're making me put contact into with? Yeah. Maybe we should have a little like homer owners association <laughs> meeting and be like, let's <laughs> we change. We want L-shaped doorknobs everywhere. Knowing like... The people that we live around, yeah. like if you did that, they would be like, yes. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. We, we live in the type of community where they're like, okay, let's install like eye tracking and only people <laughs> with certain irises can go in oh and out the door. You, yeah, that's, I could see that happening. We have too. one neighbor with like a camera door system. Let's be real. Yeah. We are the trailer trash of this complex. <laughs> we are 100% the trailer trash of this complex. But our set's probably the nicest looking out of all of them. Well, your car has gotten so old <clears throat> that it could like be like one of those vintage cars now you know it's gonna be a set piece on Kolok yeah soon. it'll yeah. be like a set piece I mean it's the same age it hasn't like I mean, no. whatever you know I mean <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks good but but yeah I, I, when I look around the people we're very fortunate that we um, that we get to live in as nice of a place we do it's one of the only places available yeah with the restrictions that we needed within Los Angeles but everyone around mm -hmm. us Oh boy. Mm -hmm. And I get, we get so many looks and yeah. we are very different compared to the people we live around. And it's really interesting to also see like how empty it is right yeah. now. Yeah. They sure. all booked out. It's making me realize how many people I thought lived in units don't. No. No. I thought they lived there. They clearly don't. It's just, it's all just work. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blows my mind. Well, we mind. have a few yeah. people live here. Yeah, there are. There are. But it's pretty but empty. Yeah. One of our neighbors, I heard him from the balcony say, Nah, boss, you can just drop it off right there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when oh, the delivery man. people come through, yeah. like, ah, 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 stay there. Yeah. Drop that's, it over that's there. Enough. Over that's there. enough. <laughs> um, so we actually do have some stuff to talk. We have a guest that's been waiting, waiting patiently. Yeah. Very I'm, patiently. I'm actually very excited about this special guest and what they're about to tell us because, yo, a lot of hin industries have been really hit hard with the COVID vote the covid pandemic and i'm very interested in hearing about how it has impacted a lot of our friends so we have a friend from the tabletop gaming industry jackson wood from japanime games the publishers of the cowboy bebop board game and so much more take it away jackson give them an intro Hi. Uh, first of all, I don't know why anybody would be excited to see me, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I mean, yeah, thank you for having me. I get to see your blue hair. It matches with the glasses. Yo, that was some coordination. <laughs> you wow. know, I have very little to do as I am <laughs> under my own house arrest right now, as many of us are. So I figured why not at least try to look a little bit better going can, into this. Can you tell us where you're calling from right now? Yeah, so uh, myself and our president of the company, Eric, both live in Portland, Oregon. We're actually about 15 minutes apart, but most of our team is remote. Uh, speaking so. of your president, let's just jump Hold right. Hold on, quick question. What are your thoughts on San Pellegrino? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I don't like fizzy water in the first place. Okay, but it's not fizzy water, oh okay? Boy. This oh is boy. the problem, is people <laughs> think it's fizzy water, but what we have discovered is it is so much more. But I will give you credit for saying LaCroix is trash. That's how I interpreted your comment. Yeah, that's your, you, you got it right. That's okay, good. I was so. paraphrasing. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Malika. You, you know, when I used to sell San Pellegrino, we called it old people water. <laughs> Great. <laughs> You're there. You've made it. They obviously, and I understand that now because, like me, they're dead on the inside and they need stronger flavors to be able to understand what they're, what they're tasting. It has like a strong mineralized taste. It's You're very strong. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's, what? Anyways, uh, speaking <laughs> what? of your, uh, your president and CEO, uh, he put out an awesome letter. And yep. uh, I, I want you to kind of maybe tell the audience a little bit more. But basically, uh, of the games that you have in stock on your online store, you're donating some of the sales to 
brick and mortar board yep. gaming store. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of give the story and paraphrase. Eric was up super late one night trying to figure out what he could do because it's going to be very much a pat myself on my, as in Japanime, uh, back on this one to some extent. But Eric likes to help people. He yeah. really wants to make the industry better and he wants to help people when he can. And so he was up late trying to figure out a way to do that. And the way he figured out how to do that was we still have online sales. We know a lot of retailers are hurting. So he decided to offer up 50% of all in-stock product orders um, and that sale to retailers. And all Whoa. the customer has to do is say, hey, I really like, so we were talking, you know, as the pre-ramble about uncles up in Seattle. Right. They can go in. They we can love make an uncles. Order. Yes. They can make an order no matter where they are in the world and say, yeah. I want to give 50% of this order to uncles. Yes. And then we reach out to uncles and say, hey, we want to give you this money. How do we get it to you? Wow. That is just so incredibly heartwarming because, you know, we have very like kind of emotional and deep connections to all the local board gaming stores that we visit. Uh, like we were just talking about uncles. Patrick Day has been on the channel and just knowing about how much they're hurting, how much they um, in turn support their own communities because they are employing, you know, a lot of local college students that's helping them get through school as they sell board games to the local community it, up in the Seattle and, uh, and Belleville. And area. I feel like 50% is a lot. That's yeah. gotta be more than your profit margin. Yes. Can like, I, that's blowing my mind too. So it's like 50% of the whole, like what I'm giving to you guys. Yeah. That's yep. so, so are you, you might... losing money doing this? We're not. So we are like, as, as a publisher, we are making very, very thin margins, but we are effectively what we have said, the way that they can look at it is, is the equivalent of a wholesale order. Uh, wow. So those retailers would be buying that game for 50% off from us to have it on their shelves anyway. Yeah. Uh, now they don't have to have it on their shelves, yes. especially if they're not open. Uh, they don't have to carry our product in the first place. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any join our retailer program or anything like that. We don't care what the retail store is. We just have to prove they're a retail store. We'll give them that money. Wow. wow. That's that's crazy. That's I really cool. that just like I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that because that's that's enormous and maybe you know, more of just like the world can be doing these kinds of yeah. things if you are in that kind of position of power. And uh, I love hearing about that. Speaking of though, why don't you tell a little bit about or talk a little bit about Japanime games because I love anime, I love board games. I had no idea these worlds were colliding like through your company. And can you yeah. just tell people a little bit more about the board games you carry? I noticed the Sailor Moon game, mm -hmm. Robotech, a cool mangaka game that maybe I think we should play. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about like how do you get a game from like a IP from Japan to a board game and that kind of thing? That or one, maybe that specifically one, there's a, there's about- There's five questions yeah, in there. <laughs> all right. Why don't you tell us specifically about like Cowboy Bebop game? Yeah, well, I, I can go through all the lists and sure. like, we can talk about Cowboy Bebop in general. Uh, but a lot of it starts with Eric actually going to Japan and talking to designers and saying, hey, we really love this game. How could we take this to a wider audience? Whoa. And so uh, as a publisher, we do a lot of translation and localization to make that game available to those more international audiences than just Japan. So that's that's part of it. And then beyond that... So that's one aspect, is bringing right. games from Japan to the wider audience. Yep. The other one is making a game with a theme in mind. Mm. So something like Love Battle High School, which has no IP associated with it whatsoever, but taking that like concept down approach and then making the game in that skin. Yeah. Uh, and then working with IPs, so talk about Cowboy Bebop, sure. we, we, we looked at who was designing the game and who actually had the IP for it. And we said, we can help this go further. We want to take this further. This is a game that we want to see in the world. So and you're so. you're both um, translating original Japanese games, adapting yeah. original Japanese games, and then creating brand new games based off of IP uh, from Japan. Are Correct. you also working with other IP outside of Japan? Or are you just, I know Japan's in the name, but mm -hmm. just focused on games from, uh, from IP from Japan? We spoke, uh, so I don't know of too many animes that didn't sure. get made in Japan, but yeah. we focus on anime IPs uh, when we do pull in IPs. So most of those are going to come from Japan, but 
who knows what like not to say that this is actually the cards but who knows what netflix animes are being made that we might be able to get our hands on Ooh, maybe right? we should have some like uh, offline conversations about this anyways right, so, some <laughs> of those <right>. things <laughs> um and then yeah, yeah specifically about cowboy bebop um you have some other partners here on the board game like what is that journey like getting such a known and beloved anime to this product on our table right now yeah, um, every every product is different, right? Every every agreement that you make for a game is going to have a different set of circumstances in it. And a lot of that comes down to who's getting what money where, what royalties are being paid, um, where are the designers in this process? Is it something that we're developing in-house or are we actually purchasing the game to then take it further? And there's no one answer. Uh, with Cowboy Bebop, we specifically work with Sunrise, who are the people who hold the IP, and we work with Don't Panic Games, um, and then the, the French designers, I believe they're French. I could be misquoting, but um, they brought the game to life. And then we, we took it that step further to, to bring it to English. Uh, amazing. I had the uh, joy and privilege of unboxing this game earlier today. And it's a quality game. Uh, hats off to you. I'm excited to explore other games from Japanime games. Like the printing is really nice. The card stock's really nice. And one thing that I super, super appreciate, I don't know if we could show this off, <laughs> is that... Um, you know, there's a lot of unboxing channels. I feel like maybe we could be the boxing channel because all the components <laughs> fit back into the box in such a nice way. There is no like I, I know there are people. God, I hope in, we don't have to do a boxing show now. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are people in the chat room, you board game nerds out there. I see you who really appreciate. Um, being able to put it away nicely. Oh, yeah. man. So let's just show them how it's yeah. put away. No, but like that's very true, though, because even just in my mm -hmm. experience of you know stuff that we've played throughout the week, it's so <laughs> nice to be able to open the box and just by looking at the slots in the box, yeah. you know exactly where everything goes perfectly. I got a question for you then, yeah. because this is something that I've recently come across as being a heated discussion. In tabletop? In tabletop within Kickstarter comment sections. Do you build the slots... Sleeves or no sleeves? Oh, man. For us, we try to go sleeves um, because we know a lot of people want to protect their cards. And a lot of our games are actually designed with the sleeving in mind. Um, sometimes okay. somebody will make a mistake and not measure things correctly. And uh -oh. it will not end. <laughs> but when that happens, we've made it a point to say, hey, here's what we're doing to resolve that issue. Here's what we're going to do for you. It's, it's very of, rare that it comes up. But. It's really ridiculous that I find that to be such a heated discussion. People really love things going back in their boxes really nicely. D dude, the and sense of peace and satisfaction <laughs> of like, <laughs> Faye Valentine goes here. I'm like, yes, this is the calm I need in my life right now. <laughs> I'm scared to go outside. But I think it's so funny that I've literally, I, I saw somebody put a comment on a Kickstarter that was like, I hope these are sized for no sleeves, or I'm just gonna have to throw this whole box oh! away. Jeez, that's Ooh, a lot of hot. And then somebody else was right after it was like, I hope it's sized for sleeves, or I'll have to throw this box away. Uh... And I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> why do we have to deal with this shit? <laughs> um, but I, I want to shift a little bit and yeah. start talking about, uh, you know, you're in the thick of it right now. Um, you know, you, you, we're playing your board game today on our <laughs> on our channel. Uh, what's it like trying to navigate? the space of the the world of tabletop in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis? Whew. Well, I can talk about my specific journey because that's okay. all I really have. So part of what I do at Japanime Games is not just the marketing aspect. I am the uh, marketing and events manager. So whenever you would see us at shows, whenever you might have seen us at shows that are now canceled this year, it was going to be me doing a lot of the setup and working with Eric to make sure it looks nice and well presented and actually being there and showing you what you get to see. So that entire half of my job is just gone. Wow. Um, so we're focusing on marketing. And a lot of that is focusing on how we can provide content and approachable products in a way that make people feel comfortable, which is a lot of jargony kind of stuff, which I'm not so much about. The idea is like we... I will be transparent. We would love people's money. We are a business. <laughs> we need to stay open. But that that's is, not our that focus. Is, that is your job as marketing person is like to, to uh, you know, we, we board games aren't free, right? Yeah. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But our goal is to just sort of keep people looking at the stuff that we're working on and our partners and the people that we love in the industry. And the navigation right now is less about 
making money, well, again, it's there, but it's more about survival. How do we all get to the other side together in a way that does not cripple our industry? And how do you foresee or theorize um, how the industry will change, maybe not six months from now, but how it's changed already? And uh, do, do you think that there will be detrimental aspects of, you know, uh, distribution, production, getting things printed, uh, made, yeah, yeah manufacturing. Assembly. And obviously with big events going away, like, I feel like that's a huge portion. Oh, my God. If Gen Con ends up getting canceled, mm -hmm. like, how, how, how do you foresee this changing the industry? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, you, you, you nailed on a lot of it, even just in the, in the hypotheticals there of one, just production stuff that we were expecting to have already gotten from, you know, our manufacturers aren't here. They're not going to be here. And we don't know when they might be here because everything's backed up or just not going to come in the first place. So that's that's step one. We, like, we have no idea, but we still have to work with the operational mentality of we still have games to produce. We still have projects that are in the works. What are we going to do? Yeah. Um, that's crazy. And, so, and that's part of it. And then the, the other part, like stepping away from that, is the shows. There's so many people who rely on that income, be it small artists or small publishers or events-based experience, experiential kind of, you know, business models that just can't. And so they're all shifting in a way. And so, you know, I don't... I don't know what the landscape of it's going to be yeah. necessarily, but everybody is going to be hurt and it's yeah. not going to be, it's not like fun is not the word to use here. We no. are an industry built on joy and fun and excitement and it's hard to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, our whole industry I think is about play, right? Yeah. And it's hard to have fun and, and get a sense of play when, uh, you know, where am I going to get? It's a scary time. Uh, scary. Yeah all sorts of things that I need for my life. First. I mean, I, I, and I, and I do believe that in this time of people being kind of, um, trapped inside with each other, mm -hmm. uh, the element of being able to play games together is really important and a great way to cope. Unless you lose to Adam at blockbuster. Oh no. It's really easy to cope, uh, with your loneliness and everything like that. But a lot of people are alone. They may have only played with friends, Yeah. but hopefully families are using board games to help get together. But say you want to get a new game. Yep. How do you do that right yep. now? All the brick and mortars are shut down. I guess yep. you can get it shipped, but a lot of shipping seems to like, I mean, even Amazon right now, when yeah, I go to try to get something, it's like, oh, it's months out. Yep. And then you have to worry about surfaces and whether or not you're bringing contamination into your home. Yeah. It's, it's wild to think about all these different industries that we kind of take for granted. Yeah. In the midst of this, you're just like, holy shit, how does this it's work? It's not as easy, easily accessible as we thought it is. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make a small prediction out there. I would love your opinion on this, Jackson. Um, I see this game, Cowboy Bebop. It says one to four players. That right. one player mode it sounds oh. very interesting to me. because, uh, And I've seen a lot of articles right now about... Uh, what board games are great to play with smaller groups because you have a lot of individuals who live by themselves or couples. Not everybody lives in a big family. Yeah. And so these board games that require, like you have to have at least four players yeah. for it to be really good, I could see those not being as popular as something like a code names that you can only play with two people. Mm -hmm. I mean, and to be completely honest, we've had to t we've been looking for games to play here at the studio, and I've had so many where I was like, oh, I'll turn it over and it'll be four to eight players. I'm like, well, there's only three of us. Yep. Guess we're not playing this yep. one. Yeah. yeah. So I could, I could see maybe an increase in those types of games in popularity for sure. Mm -hmm. How many games do you all currently have off the top of your head that are kind of one player, uh, one to two player? It's really, it's really, this is the, the one that is the one player big offering. Almost all of our games, not all of them, but almost all of them can be played two player and play well at two player. Our games are typically geared for the two to five range. Gotcha. Got it. So, cool. Wow, interesting. Well, um, well, I know we have some other topics to get to today. All of yeah. this has been extremely insightful, and uh, feel free to jump in on anything <laughs> we're talking about. We are not experts, so <laughs> don't think that you have to be an expert to share your opinion. <laughs> I mean, we are uh, just ding dongs that are doing this live every day at one p.m. <laughs> one thing that I found out about uh, Jackson is he used to be a Shiva owner. Fun fact. <laughs> There's I, the connection. There we go. There we There's go. the connection. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Shiva owners can have uh, valued opinions on anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that it's now. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that came out today that I thought was very, very interesting. The LA mayor said that uh, things like Hollywood sound stages, uh, event venues, sports venues, music venues, all that kind of stuff, hotels even, wow. 
may possibly have to be utilized um, if the if the virus itself continues, if the cases continue to surge and grow. Yeah. Uh, he said that basically anything is on the table, any place is on the table right now. If you go to a place like Staples Center, it's a small p space compared to the LA Convention Center or other things, but absolutely, whether it's hotels and motels, who need our help badly right now. And at the beginning, some were sta same, saying, well, we don't know if we can, if we want to take patients, absolutely we would take patients. People need isolation and quarantine right now. So a lot of people are sort of like shifting their opinion of like, well, we don't want to have to deal with anyone related to the virus. But now seeing how the situation has kind of continues to escalate every day, we kind of don't have really any other option. Any venue or facility that's open and has the opportunity to be taken over by medical personnel to ha try to use it to help people uh, is all on the table right now. Yeah, um, I got contacted to see if I want to get involved <coughs> with a nonprofit that is trying to help um, distribute what they call personal protective equipment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the government is kind of slow, the federal government, yep. to make certain changes. And there are, you know, people in the manufacturing industry that's like, hey, I'm ready to distribute this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where is the need in the country? Where is the need in the world? So mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting how you're seeing things pop up where, okay, we are now a makeshift factory for mass or yeah. this kind of thing or that kind of thing. And I, it, I think it's actually really inspiring. And I read something yesterday um, actually from uh, Robin Gittleman, Mitch Gittleman's wife, that when you go out and you see – you know, empty streets and empty stores and that kind of thing. Don't like feel sad or negative about it. See it as a sign that all of humanity is working, working together. together. Yeah, and I, do too. I, I really love that viewpoint. And I, I've been true. trying to think my change yeah. my thinking. And oh my God, I know it. I said this a week ago yeah. of how important that is. And that the second you start seeing uh, political pundits and people who are like, you know, within different political factions and mm -hmm. stuff like that, starting to say, like, see, this isn't as bad as everyone said it would be. They would start trying to politicize that act. Don't let them. Keep on track. Understand that social distancing is working. That's why things are moving forward slower than anticipated, which is the goal. It doesn't mean that COVID-19 is less dangerous right. and that researchers overestimated the cases. It's that what we're doing is working. And that's the whole point. We don't want to overflood the system. Going back to Eric Garcetti, though, um, I'm a little worried. Yeah. Because I feel like, did, did you see pictures from his press conference, too? I have not. He had, like, tears in his eyes. He was worked up. Yeah. I mean, he he has to protect the second biggest city in America. Mm. That's a lot on right. one person's shoulders. But what I'll say is, yeah. right now, we're mainly hearing about New York. Yeah. yeah. And how crazy things are in New York. And LA has had cases that have been... Uh, talked about for a while. Yeah. I think even before New York, LA mm -hmm. had cases. So yeah. it's weird to see how what's happening in New York. And then here it's like, it feels like it hasn't happened. Right. And then you keep hearing things from Garcetti. I'm like, what does he know that we don't? Because there's something very clearly happening yeah. that he's aware of right. and that's being discussed. I don't want to like theorize over the top or whatever sure. like that. It's just, it's very clear that the feeling we have of like, okay, well, it's not hitting us. Yeah. New York's getting hit super hard. Right. It seems like he's taking very broad steps to say sure. like, this has to happen, this has to happen, right. this has to happen, because he's yeah. anticipating it will. Well, and to chime in on that, as they're saying too, he probably has a cabinet of people that are experts or at least associated with experts that are saying, mm -hmm. we're not seeing it, but here's predictions. Here's models that we're looking at that can be yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah. It's wild, and everybody should be listening. I, I'm totally in for them using whatever facilities are available. I think that's, like, super cool. And to do it yeah. now before yeah. the wave hits us is better because yeah. you're seeing in New York they're having to try to build them right now. Right. Yeah. And they don't and have enough room. a waste room. of time. Yeah, they're running out of time. They're being over flooded already, mm -hmm. and that's what happened in Italy. So if we can start opening up these spaces now and getting them ready. It's better to be prepared, over-prepared than under-prepared, in yeah. my opinion. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, it also says uh, LA County Department of Public Health Director Do Dr. Barbara Fair said that while Los Angeles has yet to see a surge in patients similar to the situation in other cities, specifically New York, it will be, quote, foolish to not prepare, and that includes securing space for hospital beds and quarantine and isolation locations. Uh, during Wednesday's press briefing, the director of LA County's health services offer offered the latest bed counts at hospitals across the country, and there's still availability in 84 acute care hospitals across the country there are 23,000 hospital beds including 2200 ICU beds as of Wednesday there were 1500 open beds including 220 open ICU beds that's across the country yeah holy fuck yeah that's holy fuck the numbers are like it's 
I've personally had to limit my news consumption because, like I said, it feels like what I call a hit and run tragedy where yeah. vroom, another like very sad fact hits me. Yeah. And I don't even know where it came from. And now it's going around. How to process it. See, I, I, I'm, yeah. And again, we, I know we've talked about this. I'm sure. the opposite. Yeah. Uh, the press briefings that Kumo has been doing in New York, I feel like are a breath of fresh air because he's not bullshitting. Yeah. He just says, here's a fact. Here's a yeah. fact. Here's a fact. And then he tries to give a positive angle of like, here's what that fact is. And he's not going to lie to you, but here's what we can do to try to change the next mm-hmm. fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prefer that over people trying to <laughs> undersell me and be like, it's okay, it's okay. I think uh, an interesting thing that, um, this is a question maybe for Jackson and also people in the chat room, is in the city that you live in, wherever you are in the world, do you think there is a cultural component to the people who live in the city and how it has changed kind of like the government and people's attitudes to reacting to the news and the pandemic? Because I have always had this, this is my anecdote, that... Um, Los Angeles is very like health conscious anyways. We like to wake up, we like to do yoga, we like to drink juice. And I wonder if like culturally that has made any kind of change or impact to, well, we like, if we're kind of health conscious anyway, so more of our population already mm-hmm. had masks at home or, or things like that. Wow. But, but yeah, how do you feel like it's affecting your daily life in Portland? <sighs> Man, all these hard questions. Uh, <laughs> I... Don't already work from home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have to build a lot of good routines in the first place to keep me healthy and keep me active. Uh, so I like I've been more specific on my walks. Anytime I have a meal, I go for a walk for half an hour to an hour minimum, which is just me. Helps me clear my head, helps keep me active, helps keeps me focused to some extent. Like clearing my head and being focused. But now when I see people on the street, I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh, I'll just I'll do a U turn or I'll cross the street or mm-hmm. I just won't go anywhere near them. It's like Pac Man. Nope. nope. <laughs> and at least here I've noticed there's still a lot of activity in Portland. It's a lot less. There's definitely a lot less people outside doing stuff, but they are still going and doing things and who knows if they're following the orders or not, because we have a shelter in place order. So maybe they're just getting groceries. Maybe, who knows? Who knows what they're doing? I don't know, but I don't want to judge them for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people here this past weekend who kind of killed it for everybody when they all started going out on hikes, which totally understandable because everybody's been in their house for the last week. But as soon as that happened... They all went to the same place. Yeah, they all went to Runyon Canyon, like one of the most populated hiking areas in Los Angeles. And as soon as that happened, (laughs) Garcetti was like, "Uh, no, (laughs) we cannot be doing that. Yeah, it's it's very sad, but all hiking trails are now closed in Los Angeles too. Yeah. So it's like, ugh, because I feel like people really need that for their mental health. Yeah. Like now, where do you go? You have to like drive out of the city somewhere into the boonies to just get away far enough. That sounds better anyway. It does sound better. (laughs) I mean, I definitely thought about going up to the the Angeles National Forest up – just like up north um, just to get away. But yeah, it's, it's like really, really tough. Like it's really a stay at home. Mm-hmm. Don't leave your house unless you absolutely have to like, which is no. what you should be doing. Yeah. And look, I feel like I was lucky enough that I was able to like order stuff to get delivered. But you know, like you put it, you tried putting an order last no. week and it was like five days went by and then mm-hmm. when they, and then they kept taking things off the order. Yeah, like, yeah. We don't have this. We don't have this. It's yep. like, Jesus Christ, I don't want to go to the store, but like at some point I'm going to have to go, you know, Try I know this is a stuff. first world problem. Yeah, it super sure. is. I well, feel like so lucky to eat anything or have um, toilet paper. I, I was going to say, I really want the Swedish fish from Trader Joe's specifically. Oh, <laughs> I've been thinking about them nonstop, but I know there's a long line at Trader Joe's. Uh, my shopping apps don't have Trader Joe's on there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're first world post- problem. So you're going to try to Postmates them is what you're saying. Can I do that? I don't know. Get out of no. here. Get out of here. <laughs> Can I do that? Get out of here, Zach. No, but I know. I, I know if, like, for a lot of people, it's become, like... They're really good, guys. <laughs> I don't... I don't, like... Okay, like, they're yeah. really good. <laughs> the Swedish fish from Trader Joe's are a different breed of Swedish fish. I've never had them. They are so much better than the ones you can get at Whole Foods, the ones you can get at Ralph's, the ones you can order from Amazon. It's What are they called? They're, like... Uh, they're, they're even better than the ones from Ikea, straight from the fucking source. Wow. So once you, you get... You mean like the kind in the yellow bag? The ones at Ikea? Yeah, like the ones from Sweden. No, the, it's better than those by far. Oh, no. Those are the... What, yeah, those I don't even... But look... <laughs> I hope we don't have any Swedish viewers in our, in our chat rooms. They're so good. They're so good. And I've like been thinking about them for weeks. Maybe yeah, maybe weeks. we'll learn to make our own. Yeah. It won't be as good. Hey. Just look it up. They are so hey. good, though. <laughs> have you had the Trader Joe's so Swedish good. fish? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, they're so good. Thank you. I think they're called Swedish Thank- swimmers. Yes, I think they are. It's very no. weird and that can strange. be. That can be. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. Anyway, <clears throat> um, Verdi Trader yeah. Joe's naming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so there's a new bill that's that's uh, being put into place now that would potentially. It's a two trillion dollar federal aid package, and part of it would potentially help movie theaters kind of like give them a loan to kind of get back into business and to kind of deal with everything that's been happening. We talked about yesterday how uh, everybody at AMC at the AMC movie theater chain was basically like on a leave. Yeah. Including their CEO. And it's like, you're either getting little or no pay. Uh, It says this bill would set up a $454 billion loan guarantee fund that would allow distressed businesses to pay their fixed costs at a time when no revenue is coming in. And it says, with this agreement, movie theaters can look forward with confidence to reopening and once again serving their community. There's a quote from NATO, who's a national association of theater owners. Um We've talked about quite a bit how the movie theater industry is being affected. And not just the movie theaters, the exhibition part of it. It's like our entire industry as a whole uh, is being affected by this. But we just saw that China reopened, I think, 500 theaters in the last couple of days. But nobody's going. And like $2,000 in revenue and tickets. Nobody's sales. going. Like I said, the, the reports that are coming out of China are – and there's a lot of distrust of the government there too. Yeah. So when the government's saying you're all in the clear, a lot of people are like, oh, hell no. I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, with the multi-generalization, I can't speak today. <laughs> with the multi-generational households mm-hmm. in China, there, I know, and with so much respect for elders and that kind of thing, like why would you risk yourself and then risk grandma at home? Right. 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 Okay. So there's a debate happening in the chat right now uh, of whether or not licorice or Swedish fish oh are better. So God. here's the thing. Vote you one can't, for Swedish but no, fish. Okay. Here's the problem though. When people think Swedish fish, they think the ones in the yellow bag that you get at the movie theater right. or something or like that. Or the gas that. station. Or the gas. It's shit. It's trash. It's just fi- high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Okay. The ones from Trader Joe's are on another level. They're still called like Swedish fish. You identify them as Swedish what fish. What makes them better? The flavor mm. and the texture. Mm. It's the texture primarily. Te- texture is huge. Texture is big on good gummy candies. Are, are you a gummy fan? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of like texture as the thing that will first get rid of anything I'm eating. If the texture is awful, I'm out. Okay, good. I'm glad we have another gummy head uh, they're called, participating they're called, with They're called us, Scandinavian so. swimmers. Scandinavian, Scandinavian swimmers. swimmers. Okay, so if it's a vote between Scandinavian swimmers mm-hmm. and licorice, Scandinavian swimmers is going to win. You put any type of licorice up against it, I'm sorry, it's going to win. It's just, it's, it's a primarily a more advanced treat. I mean, Zach and I are, we love gummies too. I guess we could call them gummy heads. We thought about um, giving them out as party favors for our wedding. And uh, the, the, the gummy that I'm craving is, you know, those um, muscat flavored Japanese ones with the, the kind of green and they're indi- indi- individually wrapped. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jackson, do you know what I'm talking about? I love those. They, I love those the most because yes. they smell good. When those you do have great flavor, yeah. but the texture is also really strong. Yeah, the it's texture is texture. great. Uh, a good springy, juicy. Yeah, it's a like springy, bouncy. a little sticky. Not too sticky though. But they not have the best sticky. aroma. You See, open one up. And I think mm. I think the Annie's gummies that you like those are too sticky. They t- they they're too well, sticky. Yeah, but they're juicy. They are juicy, but too sticky. Mm-hmm. I I need moisture. You know, like uh, with like Har- Haribo gummy bears, they're yes. too hard. And this is why we are all qualified to sit here and discuss the problems of COVID-19 of in our current economy. Because gummies, baby. Uh, gummies. And how it's affecting all of us here. That's right. Uh, also, everyone on YouTube is telling me to chuck my beer. This is a San Pellegrino. San Pellegrino. All the way from Italy. Oh what are you talking about? The limonata. Today's, today's episode of Hypercast brought to you by San Pellegrino. Limonata. The best. LaCroix. An Italian tradition. No. Sparkling lemon beverage with 16% lemon juice from Concentrate. 16% from with Concentrate. With other natural I would have guessed more. 120 calories per can. I would have so guessed more. So only drink two, please. I would have guessed more. 240. <laughs> First ingredient, water, so that's good. See? Second ingredient, you. sugar. Oh, man. Since 1932, it is older than all of us. Thank God. Hmm. <laughs> um... When do you think the United States people will feel comfortable about going back to the movie theater, even when these things are lifted? Do you think? I think you're the best answer for that because yeah, you're the you, biggest cinephile movie you head. You used that to I work know. for a movie theater, yeah. so you, you tell us. For me personally, I, I, I think I'm definitely, it's going to take me a couple weeks. Yeah. I think, like, let's say. After, after restrictions. Yeah. Let's not say a couple the res- weeks from now. Yeah. Let's say the restrictions are lifted May 1st. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> I probably still won't go to the theater till for probably like, June. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to give it a good four weeks for everything to kind of be like, <whistles> scrub yeah. down. I'm like, we're in turtle mode. Yeah. Is it safe to come? No. Yeah. For the time being, I'm going to really enjoy uh, just Netflix. Netflix and chill or IMAX and Climax, as oh Dinesh boy. likes to call it. <laughs> oh, That'll Malika, be short we, soon. Uh, Malika, we forgot to tell you. Uh, <laughs> we had a little discussion about IMAX and Climax hitting our merch store. What? Coming soon. Oh, Coming to soon to our merch store. Is that, is that even legal? <laughs> it will be. Uh, nobody else. Uh, that, yeah, that's no one that's just a phrase. It's just a phrase. It's going to be hitting the merch it's gonna store. Be our shirt. Yeah. Well, fuck it. We're going to make a shirt. IMAX and Climax. Yeah. Oh, boy. Why would you choose Netflix and chill over IMAX and Climax? I mean, bigger that's screen, so bigger climax. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everything is bigger. <laughs> In climax. I mean. IMAX. <laughs> Room, but one for uh, yes, I would buy. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good old time. You got any more topics you want us to talk about today? There, um, <laughs> I'm a little afraid about how you're going to derail some of these things. What are you talking All about? Right. Come on, we got we got it. We're ready. Oh, you know what I'm actually I'm on excited my best for? behavior. That's right. Yeah, uh, Jackson, why do you keep derailing all these conversations? <laughs> You know what I'm actually excited about? Portrait of I'm a Lady. I'm a fucking madman. <laughs> <laughs> Portrait of a Lady on Fire is going to start streaming on Hulu on Friday. Ooh. And it's coming to Criterion, I believe, in June. Um, but obviously, because of everything that's happening, it's going to be coming to to, uh, to digital streaming sooner. There's actually like a lot of movies that are that are going to. I'm so curious to see how many more films as we go on and mm-hmm. on and on and on. Aside from things like we've talked about the big blockbuster movies right. that we think are going to Portrait happen. of a Lady on Fire, uh, I, you may have heard of the director of that film in the news. I know it was trending a little while ago because she uh, um, uh, got up and walked out yes. of mm. the theater when... The French, some French award show, I believe, when Polanski won. Yeah, gave won. Polanski an award yeah. and she was not having it. Yeah, yeah. she not walked out it. very vocal and I was like... Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Good mm-hmm. on you. Yeah, there's there was quite a few. There not a quite a few. There were a couple people who walked out, but she was definitely one of them, and was definitely like, you could visibly. I mean, it's oh, she was yelling as she yeah, was walking. She was yelling out. as she was yeah. walking out. Uh, yeah, yeah, ab- yeah. About uh, people supporting pedophilia, and you're like, oh, yeah, pretty Ooh. much, pretty much. Um, yep, but uh, the movie looks amazing. It does. Yeah. The trailer looks phenomenal. It's, yeah. it, it won a bunch of awards overseas. Very uh, successful looks, film. Yeah, uh, awards wise. Uh, um, internationally as well um hollywood's biggest movies are still stuck in limbo with start dates uncertain Mm -hmm. i really am curious how quickly after all of this all these restrictions are lifted when some movies are going to start going into production again and how that's going to affect their release dates mission impossible seven eight one of them (laughs) yeah the one (laughs) that they're the one that they're currently making the a big part or a big chunk of that movie was shooting in Italy. Yeah. Oh, right wow. when like oh, the wow. country started uh, shutting yeah, down, yeah. they were one of the first movie productions, major uh, Hollywood movie productions, to shut down. And like, who knows when productions are going to be able to start back up in Italy? So aside from you know we talk about financial losses for movies that are already yeah. supposed to come out now, I can't even begin to imagine how that's going to affect big temple movies that were supposed to come out, you know, nine to twelve months from now that like literally have no clue when they're going to be able to start production. The Batman, another one, it was shooting in Scotland, I think, when all of this stuff went down. I don't personally know the numbers in Scotland. Sure. You know, like how many people have been affected and what they're, what they're going through. But it's going to be really interesting to see how many of these movies with international productions are going to sort of like have to navigate and then maybe like go back and rewrite stuff and change locations. And like overall, like I, I the, the numbers... Are, and I'm not usually a numbers person when it comes to Hollywood. I don't, yeah. don't yeah. really care. But just to get an idea and some context as to like how this will affect our industry is going to be interesting to me to see like what how they're going to like recoup all these losses. Yo, I'm going to pitch a solution to all of these problems. Oh, this will be good. All Maybe right. Okay. All right. Sound Internet, I'm putting this message out there for you. All you wait, men- wait. For you as in Hollywood? No, 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 like just the, the world. I, I'm just putting oh, the okay. message out there for the world in Jackson. For this, impl- this applies for everyone, not I, just Hollywood. I, I think there's like superpowers in that blue hair. So Jackson too, all right? <laughs> okay, here's a solution to all y'all problems. Mm. Manufacturers of surgical masks, medical supplies, hand sanitizer. I'm looking at you, Instacart, Postmates, Grubhub, all of you people. Business is booming for you. I know it is. Buy some product placements for these movies that we want. There, problem solved. Eh. Okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> uh, I wish it was that simple. I really I do. Buy product placement for, for the these movie. movies that are getting like hit 
by the whole pandemic. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, hey, we don't have to make the problem complicated. But, but at the end of the day. <laughs> Can I just dream about a world <laughs> you can where dream solutions about it. are that you easy? You can dream about but like at the end of the day, why not just have Instacart, Postmates? If you're saying you got the money, yeah. help us fund this entertainment. Sure. Why the, not? You got the money. Why don't you buy PPE equipment? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you got the money. No, I, you should be delivering PPE directly to hospitals. Uh, well, not, let's buy some product placement for the next Mission Impossible. Uh, Ethan Hunt can take care of himself. <laughs> Tom Cruise can run, run for. He'll run outrun run the for coronavirus. coronavirus. No, like, you know, like in the past, it was like cool car manufacturers that mm. were putting par- product placements into movies. You know, the next wave of films when people start going back to theaters, it's gonna be your hand sanitizer. It's gonna be Purell. I'm telling you, when this happens, tweet at me and be like, Malika, she could tell the future. She was right. <laughs> oh, dear God! <laughs> Somebody's gonna find one usage case and it's gonna validate her entire oh, theory. My. Hey. If an emoji movie can be made, anything is possible. But that doesn't crazy, mean it's a yeah. good idea. <laughs> We're seeing it though. <laughs> I I saw I heard an ad the other day when I was coming back from the grocery store about ham, how Amazon is looking for entrepreneurs to build their own delivery business. Yeah. Oh my god. Which is just Amazon saying we need more people to deliver stuff. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You should make a company, mm-hmm. and we'll buy to it. Do that, yeah. yeah. We'll buy it. We'll yep. buy your. Do the thing. Will you all please do the legwork so we can then take the credit for yeah. <laughs> and, continuing the services that you expect? We've seen some of that. Um, I used the delivery service once. It was called Rinse, and they pick up your laundry and they drop it off three days later, clean and folded, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. they have transitioned their business. They'll keep doing your laundry if you want them to, but they're also picking up donations. So they're transitioning into a touchless donation service for the city of Los Angeles. I think that's really cool. But I'm talking about after we're all you know through this, you know, I want to see Ethan Hunt washing his hands. Speaking of Ethan Hunt, somebody made a very ridiculous claim in the chat room right now. Yeah, they said they're just trying. Why to won't they me? let Mission Impossible die already? Okay. Because it's good! (laughs) Have you seen Fallout? It just keeps getting better! It's one of the only franchises out there where it just keeps getting better! You want to stop now? Fast and the Furious. Okay, that's another example of something that just keeps getting better! (laughs) And and, and like I said, just because we love Mission Impossible does not mean it's an endorsement of Tom Cruise. That's the whole other thing over there, okay? Hey, they can can replace that person. I said Ethan Hunt. I never said Tom Cruise. I'm here on Christopher McQuarrie's Ethan Hunt's a completely different person. We can cast somebody else for that uh, Make him the James Bond. No, you can't. No, you can't. But, uh, (laughs) no, no, it's not that easy. You don't just make a new Ethan Hunt. (laughs) Yeah, why not? No! <laughs> can't have a new 007. The new Ethan Hunt won't jump out of a plane like a crazy person. You need a little bit of the Tom Cruise crazy <laughs> to break, make these movies. Or break their, break their ankle jumping and uh, keep uh, running. from building the building and be like, okay, I'm fine. As much Let's as I going. disagree with Tom Cruise and oh, his personal no. beliefs, I, can't even. I love that that man is batshit crazy and thinks he can heal himself and will just do these things that make our movies so good. Yeah. I'll what just, I'm hearing I'll just jump and survive. It'll be fine. is that we need a very much McElroy style solution of get Zach to become the new Ethan Hunt. Okay. That's what we need. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I have no care for my personal safety. I'm down. <laughs> Let's do this. Zach will run 50 steps and be like, fuck it. Yeah, ah! that's true. That's true. I could only get about 10 paces before I'd be like, no, yeah, okay, I can't do this job. That's oh, fine. Oh, my God. That's fine. Oh that's fine. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> it was fun. Um, we're really, really excited to play Cowboy Bebop later today. Uh, we have an entire Cowboy Bebop themed day. Um, Malika's going to be making some takoyaki upstairs. Yeah! Uh, in our next segment, then we're going to be coming back downstairs to play the Cowboy Bebop board game. It's got minifigs. Um, it's going to be so much fun. And then after that, we're actually going to watch the anime. Uh, we're going to do a watch along because Adam's never seen it. Yeah. And this is true. Um, we're going to do the first four episodes. It's going to be great. I have a feeling we're going to get through the first four, and episode five is really strong, so we're going to be like, okay, just one more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just one, just one more. more. And then 26, 26 hours and 26 episodes later, we're like, oh, oh. what have we done? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be a good time. It'll be a good time. Uh, it, it's going to be a really fun day today. We're going to be celebrating Cowboy Bebop 
all day long mm-hmm. and how much we love this franchise and everything it represents. And uh, you should definitely be joining us throughout the entire day. It's going to be super fun. It's going to be a really fun day today while you're trapped inside being extremely good at practicing social distancing we're here to try to keep you entertained informed poorly um <laughs> but I mean, entertained but entertained more importantly <laughs> uh while being informed poorly is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we have to to throw it up to malika soon? uh i mean i just want to remind people that you know we are streaming every single day and even though on youtube we go down at two uh we are streaming all day on Twitch. <clears throat> we usually end the stream around 9 or 10 o'clock, sometimes later, depending on, on how poorly Zach is doing in Death Stranding. Um, but we're still having a fun time. Excuse me? <laughs> but we're just having I got a, a motorcycle last uh, night. Honey, don't talk with your mouth full. You might choke to death. <laughs> um, but we're here every single day, Monday through Friday, from 1 all the way until 10 or later. So if you guys are looking for something to do, or you just want to pop in throughout the day. You last, yesterday, we had a really good time playing the Blockbuster game. Then we watched Hot Rod, which was awesome. And then uh, tomorrow, we're going to be watching Ex Machina. And the game that we're playing is... Uh, Decrypto? Decrypto. Yes. Decrypto. Decrypto. Yes. So we're doing stuff here all the time. And we l- would love to hear from you guys on social media. You can tweet us at hyper underscore RPG. Oh, my God. I might have to ban Kezbox from our chat. Or, or Mission <laughs> Impossible is not bad. It's genius. The last two movies were fucking amazing. Come on. Get out of here. I'm triggered right now. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Maybe if we hit our goal, Zach will make a video about why Mission Impossible franchise is so great. Oh, my God. I saw the last one four times in theaters. That is true. In IMAX? <laughs> Once in IMAX. Uh, I saw it at uh, Real D Studios in 3D. I was oh, such that's a, right. I was such a big fan. They were like, you want to come watch it here? Yes. <laughs> Where was I? You weren't invited. No, it was a thing we did. That's a thing. We did. And when we got our new sound system uh, set up upstairs, the first movie we tested on was, was Fallout. Fallout uh, the specifically the car chase scene. Yeah, it was. the sound design in that scene amazing. is amazing. So bonkers. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and then tomorrow, we'll probably start talking about kind of what we're going to be doing next week for our watch along stuff. There's a lot of stuff on digital streaming. And with all these new movies coming out as well, you know, we, we, dive, we dove into Birds of Prey and Bloodshot on mm-hmm. Wednesday night. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep doing this every single day because uh, we got nothing else to do. What else are you supposed to yeah. do at camp? Social distance. If you mm-hmm. appreciated spending time with us, thought this was fun, thought this was entertaining, we would appreciate it if you also share our link to just one other friend. One, one other friend. friend. Just one. Tell just one, one friend. friend. Come one. join us. Yeah. Come join us. Hang out with us. Be a friend. Come on, Zach. All right. I got to go And upstairs. you can go get our new t-shirt. Woo! Only 100 available. Uh, we've already got close to 25 sold, only 100, av- 100 available, that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's up on our shop right now, hyperrpg.live, if you want to grab that. And uh, is the other cut up it too? Is. All right, and then we have a, another option if you don't prefer the unisex and you prefer, I don't know how to say this inclusively, lady cut shirt, I got you. Uh, we also put that up on our store. Uh, we found out tragically that... Lady cut shirts cost a lot more to manufacture, but I thought it was wrong to charge people who prefer that size or shape of shirt more than everybody else. But if you're uh, kind of like, well, I don't know what cut I prefer, Hyper gets more of a kickback if you buy the unisex style. Boom. Okay. Uh, we did have a couple things come in mm. during the show that I wanted to shout out. Metis Fodum tipped and said, Campy Camp Cast. Woo! Yeah. 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 Oh, we got Thank that new you emote that. in the Twitch chat, too. We do have a new emote in the Twitch chat, yeah. Um, we had a couple resubs come in, and then Supreme Death also donated and said, thanks for the great content. Keep up the wonderful work. Well, thank you for watching. We really do appreciate it. And I don't actually, I'm not going to ban somebody for not liking a movie that I like. I wouldn't do that. I'm not that petty, but I will fight you to the death. Uh-oh. <laughs> Watch out. With San Pellegrino. I won't, I won't ban you, but I will strangle you personally. Dun 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 I will never forgive you for this. I fucked up, okay? Mistakes were made. Oh yeah. Don't make it weird, Zach.
<laughs> this is the content you subscribe for. <laughs> hey! Woo! We got a little USB extender here. It'll line everything up. I was anticipating a PC game would be dropping that I would want to do some couch gaming with. It's called the Couch Master. It's the Couch Master. Yes. It's kind of hard to run away. Um, if you get stung, though, make sure that you pick up the wasp nest. That'll be oh, no! No! Oh. No! Oh. Oh. No! Oh, my God, Finn! Get away from me! Get away from me! So is there anything I can do about my condition? Yeah, go buy some medicine. Greetings, passengers. As you may have noticed, we've put Kolok 1991 in park. For the time being, we're going to be taking a little break. To ensure our own health and safety during the COVID-19 outbreak, Kolok 1991 is going to be taking Hello, a break. everybody! Welcome to Survival Skills with me! How are you guys doing today? Are you surviving? Are you eating well? Are you getting along with everybody you're stuck with? Are you getting along with yourself? Well, I am here and we are going to spend the next two hours together. I am so honored with your presence. Who's in the chat room right now? Let's do a roll call. Who's here? I don't see the chat room moving. I wonder if we're live. Ooh, these ingredients look exciting. Well, let me tell you where I'm at right now. I know last week I had this whole spiel about cooking with limited ingredients, saving money, it's okay, make replacements. I still, oh look at hey, all of y'all, it's catching up now. What's up, Catfoot, Mr. Owl, uh, Quine, Royalty, Cape On, Orion Power, Cat Loki, Dragon Q, C T H D. how did you say that in one word, D-Man, Aladonia, Okami, Luna, hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much. So, I gotta be honest with y'all, confession time, okay? Uh, I love cooking. I love cooking so much. And the act 